in rc okay and uh, speaking about reading comprehension this is another uh, another important topic in uh, uh, verbal ability section okay so you can't uh, eliminate this topic you can uh, find it in placement papers and also you can find it in uh, competitive exams so that's how rc is uh, playing its important role okay and uh, today i'm going to take you through reading comprehension concepts and how you can solve them in easy way there are few techniques and tricks involved in rc which uh, most of us will not be knowing so what people will think reading comprehension is just what reading the passage and answering it uh, from the questions given below so you have to search from the passage and you have to answer it but beyond that there are a lot of tricks and techniques involved in rc that's what we're going to discuss in today's session okay so i'll quickly take you through the session and you'll be knowing what is rc why rc is used and uh, uh, what are all the techniques and strategies involved in rc and how you can solve it i mean how you can do it quickly so these are the things which are going to uh, discuss in today's class but before going into the topic directly i i am going to give you some activity okay so we can do that first and then from that we can move to the topic so yeah we will just give me a couple of minutes I guess the screen is visible for all of you. Okay, so check whether the screen is visible or not. Now uh, I am going to display a video that's uh, that's a kind of uh, a short film. You can just check through the uh, short film. You can watch that, and you should give me what do you infer from that short film. Okay, so that's what we are going to do now. So hold on. Here's a 
You lay them on forever. Okay, so this is the uh, short film. What do you infer from this? I've seen this and what do you infer from this? You can let me know in the chat. Did you all understand the animated film or do you want me to uh, repeat it again? Okay, just give me a few more minutes. I'll repeat it again. Probably uh, there was audio. Uh, you might not be hearing as loud as possible. Just go through the motion picture. So this is, uh, again, I'm showing it. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's one good observation. A lot of you can come up with your own perspectives because uh, you're not going to restrict any answers here. So you need to think. So this video is make you to think what are all the perspectives that you can bring. Not all five fingers are same. Correct. So everybody will have different perspectives. So one uh, uh, person has told that you want success in your life. Or you want to reach your goal, you should have patience and uh, work hard to achieve the goal. So that's one of the perspectives. And what is the other inferences which you can make out of that video? You watched it twice, right? What are all the other inferences? You have observed that video, the sunflower. All of his uh, friends were not willing to move and they were dying. They never let anyone's opinion stop you from working on your goal. Okay, good. Never give up. Try your best till we achieve it. Good. So I am getting a lot of perspectives. The video shows us that we should never give up. Okay, very good. So now, now only you people are opening up. So let's see how many responses we are getting so another thing is at the end uh, it's not actually an end we thought that's an end but life also goes on correct so that's another perspective which we can get because that one sunflower it uh, uh, actually spreaded its seeds to the next land which is uh, very watery okay so there the next morning you can see uh, another small flowers grew up so life goes on it never ends so that's a cycle so that's also uh, one of the perspectives which we can get from that video we shouldn't take any decisions by seeing others journey we need to take our own way to achieve the goal so your uh, decision should not be impacted uh, by others thinking or others saying. Okay, good. So like that, you can come up with different perspective, different inferences for one single video. Now look at this picture. Um, here is a picture. Uh, there is one more answer. After facing many difficulty, we become strong and we face any kind of situation in life. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so there is uh, one picture put up here. So what do you infer from this picture? You can see this kid and what do you infer from this? What 
What do you infer from this picture? What do you infer from this picture? You can see there is a kid and uh, behind that you can see uh, he is in kitchen, correct? Uh, you can see that bezels and all. And what do you observe from his, uh, not observation, what do you infer from his look on his face? What is your inference? I want all of you to respond because there should be a two way communication. Okay. So there should not be a single way communication. So keeping it interactive. There should be a two way communication. I want your ideas as well. Then only we can move forward with the topic, the concept. Yes, so from his uh, mouth, you can see that uh, some uh, ketchup kind of thing or you can put it uh, like it, it can be even chocolate. Okay, so the kid has uh, went to has gone to this kitchen and he has uh, taken chocolate or uh, ketchup and you have eaten that. Correct. So and look at this look. It is a quirky look. Okay, so doing some as if he has done something uh, mischievous. So that's the look which he is giving. So from that we can infer that only. So what and all we can observe is he is in the kitchen and uh, his look and uh, the ketchup or the chocolate surrounding his uh, mouth. That all those things which we can observe. But the thing which we can infer is the result that is based on the guessing or based on the knowledge which we can infer is uh, the child he has taken this uh, chocolate and he would have eaten from that uh, cover from the pieces covering his mouth okay so this is what we can infer and what do you infer from this uh, picture so you can see a girl with mobile so that's the observation and also she is in the middle of the road covered by trees that's again an observation you can see her car okay what do you infer from this?
What's your inference? Okay, she might need a mechanic to repair her car. So from this you can observe that yeah, she tries to call the mechanic or friend for uh, someone for help. Yes, car broke down in the middle of the journey. So the girl might be calling someone exactly. So that's the result that that's what we can infer from this picture. Her uh, car broke down in the middle of the road. So she's calling or uh, trying to reach out someone, maybe her friends or mechanic to uh, bring her help. Okay, so that's the inference for this picture. Now, what do you infer from this? You could see a person uh, that's a diagrammatic representation, but still you can assume a person is carrying a load. Okay, so that's what we can observe. But what can be the inference? Shifting, okay, okay, good, uh, uh, good inference. That is, uh, he might be shifting. Yeah, person stressed out by carrying heavy load. Good. So you can see that the sweat of the person, right? So that's considered to be the sweat uh, above his head. So he's trying hard to carry the load. Yeah, so he's trying hard to carry it. So he is working hard. From this, we can observe that he is working hard, and uh, you can see the sweat coming out of the head. Hard work. That's the simple thing and precise thing which we can infer. Good. Next one. Yeah. So uh, these are all the inferences which we made for the uh, movie, the I mean the short film and the pictures. Now you have to read this. Okay. Go through this line by line. And there is a continuation in the next slide as well. First, you can go through this slide. And my question is, who has stolen the money? So this is the question. And you have to answer the question by giving the, uh, by reading this uh, story. So this is a story taken from a book. I'll tell you the name of the book.
is you can go through the story so this is the story um, we have the continuation in the next slide first you can read this Before I went to bed that night, I asked Baba if he had seen my new watch anywhere. The next morning, I waited in my room for Ali to clear the breakfast table in the kitchen, waited for him to do the dishes, wipe the counters. I looked out my bedroom, uh, bedroom window and waited until Ali and Hassan went grocery shopping to the bazaar, pushing the empty wheelbarrows in front of them. Then I took a couple of the envelopes of cash from the pile of gifts and my watch and tiptoed out. I paused uh, before Baba's study and listened in. He had been uh, in there all morning making phone calls. He was talking to someone now about shipment of drugs due to arrive next week. I went downstairs, crossed the yard and entered Ali and Hassan's living quarters by the locket tree. I lifted Hassan's mattress and planted my new watch and a handful of Afghani bills. I waited another 30 minutes. Then I knocked on Baba's door and told what I hoped would be the last in a long line of shameful lies. Next slide. Through my uh, bedroom window, I watched Ali and Hassan push the wheelbarrows loaded with meat, non food, vegetables up the driveway. I saw Baba emerge from the house and walk up to Ali. Their mouths moved over words I couldn't hear. Baba pointed to the house and Ali nodded. They separated. Baba came back to the house. Ali followed Hassan to their hut. A few moments later, Baba knocked on my door. Come to my office, he said. We're all going to sit down and settle this thing. I went to Baba's study, sat in one of the leather sofas. It was 30 minutes or more before Hassan and Ali joined us. They had both been crying. I could tell from their red puffed up eyes. They stood before Baba hand in hand and I wondered how and when I had become capable of causing this kind of pain. Baba came right out and asked, did you steal that money? Did you steal Amit's watch, Hassan? So this is, this is the story. You can see there are four characters involved. One is uh, Baba and the other is the narrator himself. And the third is Ali, fourth is Hassan. So these are all the four characters. And my question is who has stolen the money? So money here is the Afghani bills. What do you think? What's your answer? It is a Baba or it is the narrator or it is Ali or Hassan. Narrator, okay. What about others? What about others? You can you have four options here, and two persons is uh, two persons have given that narrator as the answer. Okay, I'll explain the story, and the narrator is the wrong answer. 
to explain the story and uh, you can uh, go for the next try so i represents the narrator so he is asking the night uh, uh, the night before he is asking to his baba that is his father that's called as baba uh, whether he has seen his new watch anywhere so like that he is asking so his new watch in the sense that is the narrator's new watch the next morning i waited in my room for ali to clear the breakfast table in kitchen so ali is someone he is he has some household chores that is um, clearing the breakfast table and uh, washing the dishes and also he is going to grocery shopping to the bazaar so from this we can tell that ali is made over there okay so and also ali along with hasan they are going to grocery shopping so from the point you can understand that both ali and hasan are the narrators and his father's maid okay and next second paragraph then i took a couple of envelopes of cash so i represents again the narrator we don't know who is the narrator here now the narrator is taking uh, the envelopes having cash from the uh, pile of gifts and my watch so he is taking both the things cash and his watch and tiptoed out i passed before baba study and listen so the, now the narrator is going uh, i mean crossing his baba's study room and he is listening what the uh, what he is doing actually so baba is making lot of phone calls and he was talking to someone now about a shipment of drugs due to arrive next week so he is inquiring about uh, his business okay i went downstairs so the narrator is going downstairs and he is crossing the yard and entered ali and hasan's living quarters now the narrator is going to hasan's hasan and ali's quarters i lifted hasan's mattress so he is taking hasan's mattress and he is keeping his new watch and handful of afghani bills under it under whose mattress under hasan's mattress who is keeping that is the narrator is keeping and then i waited for another 30 minutes then i knocked on baba's door and told what i hope would be the last in the long line of shameful lies so this is an important point so what the narrator is coming to tell is he is knocking at his father's door and he is telling him a shameful lie so after a long time he is telling a shameful lie so he himself mentioning that okay now let's see in the second passage Through my bedroom window, I watched Ali and Hasan push the wheelbarrows loaded with meat, non fruit, and vegetables up the driveway. I saw Baba emerge from the house and walk up to Ali. So now, after listening to his uh, son's uh, query, he is going to Ali, and then their mouths moved over words I could not hear because the uh, narrator is seen from his bedroom window from long distance, so he could not hear what they were actually uh, speaking. He only uh watched the lips movement of the lips and then baba pointed to the house and ali nodded uh, nodded they separated baba came back to the house ali followed hasan to their hut now everybody is coming to the house a few moments later baba knocked on my door come to my office so he is telling come to my office like that the baba's office they are going to sit down and settle this thing that is uh, the money has gone right that that that's the lie uh, the narrator has told to baba okay uh, so after hearing that baba has gone to ali and hasan's place and they and he asked them to come to the house to discuss about this i went to baba's study sat in one of the leather sofas it was 30 minutes or more before hasan and ali joined us now everybody is sitting along with baba that is narrator baba hasan and ali they both been crying so who are crying here that is those who are accused hasan and ali they are accused right so they both been crying i could tell them from their red puffed up eyes they stood before baba hand in hand and i wondered how and when i would uh, become capable of causing this kind of pain so again he is giving us one more important point he has put hasan and ali into suffering by telling a lie okay because in the previous slide only it tells that it's a shameful lie one among his shameful lie that the narrator has caused baba came right out and asked did you steal that money did you steal amir's watch hasan 
so he is asking to whom he is asking to hasan did you steal that money did you steal amir's watch so amir is here the narrator the name of the narrator is amir that we have come to know from the last line only so baba is asking to hasan did you steal the money and you steal, did you steal amir's watch so here who has actually stolen so this is a wonderful story taken from the book the kite runner written by khalid hosseini so nobody has stolen uh, the money or the watch it is narrator that is amir he himself he is acting a stage i mean a uh, stage play so he staged out this act and uh, he staged out this act and accused hasan and ali for this for stealing the money and the watch so that's why baba is calling out them and enquiring about the watch and the money he purposefully did it that's what we can infer from the passage if you read it uh, i mean from the story if you read it line by line you will understand this now coming back to the topic which we are about to discuss that is reading comprehension so as i mentioned earlier this is an important topic so reading comprehension if you split it you get these two words comprehension is what you understand from what you have read out that is reading comprehension now we have discussed many activities right um, we have discussed about uh, um picture and what do you infer from that picture and we have also discussed uh, as we have also seen a uh, short film and also we have read read through the lines between uh, the story which we have seen in the slide okay. in the in all those things inference played an important role what you observe is different and what you infer from your observation is different okay and that inference is going to play an important role in reading comprehension in doing reading comprehension i'll tell you why is that now reading reading is a part of uh, our day to day life and reading comprehension it is the ability to what is being read to understand what the author is trying to convey and also to make inferences to what you read so that's why i have given you some of the activities with respect to inferences so what do you mean by inference inference is nothing but guess or even you can call it as assumption it's based on your observation uh, or it can be based on your previous knowledge or previous experience that is inference you're making guess or you are making an assumption based on your observation and knowledge that is inference so it basically involves what you know to make a guess about what you don't know okay and here you are going to use logical thinking for guessing uh, you have to think logically based on the textual information given there so you will be having a textual information that the passage by using that passage you have to think logically to come to a conclusion or to make any critical judgments so that is reading comprehension and why reading comprehension so why rc is kept in placement papers or why it is focused the main uh, focus is it consumes a lot of time seriously it consumes a lot of time if you sit and read each and every line we have discussed a story right so in that we have going uh, we were going through each and every line so it's going to consume a lot of time if you go through each and every line that's a different reading that and that i will give you in strategies of reading the main focus uh, should be to have a good command over the language that's the main focus and next one is how much you can manage the time that is again another focus so that's why rc is uh, rc comes into picture how can we do the rc 
so there are a lot of strategies for uh, doing rc that we will discuss so the first one is skimming so this is one of the strategy second one is scanning and the third one is intensive reading so this is intensive reading and the fourth one is extensive reading so these are the strategies which uh, people used to follow i will explain each and everything one by one and you are going to apply this in reading comprehension passages so what is skipping any idea about skimming any idea about skimming okay i'll give you one example so you're steaming milk you're boiling milk right so what happens if you boil uh, for 15 minutes and uh, 20 minutes you can see that uh, foam foam coming out on the surface of the milk correct so that is we skim and take the foam alone we separate it uh, separate the foam from the milk and we will just have the milk so that is skimming so skimming is actually uh, reading the surface reading the surface of the passage so that is skimming you can surface in the sense you can read the headings subheadings first two lines of the first paragraph and the last paragraph if you read that you can come to an idea what is the passage exactly speaks about so that's skimming now you would have got an idea about what is skimming so that's one of the strategies widely used in this you can read the title you can read the first paragraph of the introduction and you can read the last paragraph of the uh, conclusion and also you can go across the headings and some headings you will understand something out of that so you will get the theme out of that so that is skimming and then second strategy scanning so scanning um, again it is uh, reading something quickly okay so here you can search for the keywords uh, any other uh, numbers for example you if you have important name telephone number date like that you can search for the keywords and you can make a note of that instead of reading line by line we can scan over the keywords and make a note of that and read it quickly that is scanning here uh, you are going to read less and you are going to search more so it's basically searching for keyword keywords that's scanning and then intensive reading third strategy is intensive reading so it is uh reading everything it's going through the text uh you can take the passage and going through uh, from the top till the bottom so that is intensive reading if you are a bookworm who is uh, uh, who reads lot of book then you can follow intensive reading reading it line by line reading between the lines next extensive reading so extensive reading is done for fun okay, for example you read magazine okay so we don't uh, remember anything out of it and for uh, fun and pleasure we read that's extensive reading so we don't give much focus or concentration uh, 
when applying this strategy that is called as extensive breeding so these are the four uh, strategies which we have in breeding and on an average a person can breed 120 to 160 words per minute okay so then assume how fast you can read that is 120 to 160 words you can read it in one minute okay so whenever rc is given just go through the passage if the passage is only four to five lines then it is going to be a difficult passage if the passage is having more than 200 or 250 lines and even uh, two paragraphs or three paragraphs then it's going to be easy to medium level of difficulty okay so don't skip those kind of passages that those passages will be easy and they will be medium uh, kind of things so don't skip those passages next one is different types of uh, uh, topics which you can get in reading comprehension one is social science in social sciences you can get history anthropology sociology and government and in natural science you can get topics about biology physics chemistry astronomy and botany humanities and business so these are the topics or uh, different area in which we can cover for practicing reading comprehension next is different types of questions which come in reading comprehension so this is an important slide so this is how we can get we can expect questions from reading comprehension first one factual so factual means questions are based on the facts given in the passage you can read the passage you can you can get directly from the passage that's a direct question if the question is asked and if you search on the passage you can get the answer directly from the passage that is factual and main idea so main idea is every sentence or every paragraph in the passage will speak about central theme of the passage central theme or crux crux of the passage so that is called as main idea it will directly or indirectly speak about the theme of the passage you can consider that theme to be the main idea of the passage so this is one kind of question you can expect from the reading comprehension what is the main idea of the passage like that and third question is title what is the title of the passage which you can give so this is the third question for this question again this title is linked to main idea of the passage once you figure out what is the main idea you can also figure out what is the title of the passage okay so for title of the passage title is not the conclusion so title is something which you give for the overall central theme of the passage again if you read every paragraph given in the passage you will get the title of the passage okay so that's going to be the overall thing which you give for the uh, passage and this uh, this kind of question you can choose by eliminating the options that's one trick which we follow and then finally inference inference is again for that we have discussed a lot of uh, activities what do you infer from that passage so this is the question this is again an indirect question this is not a direct question we can't directly find answer from the passage you need to read the passage and you have to tell your understanding okay so that is what do you infer from the passage and then finally we have tone tone based question what is the tone of the passage or what is the mood of the author both are same kind of questions you need to find out the tone or mood of the author and there are a lot of uh, options here so you'll be given with options to find out the tone or mood of the author uh, first we will take one uh, tone okay so that is called as uh, that's not given this slide you can make note of this acerbic so this is one tone so acerbic acer means harsh okay the meaning of acer means harsh so acerbic means uh, speaking harshly or disagreeing harshly that is acerbic 
said the author uh, would have spoken uh, in a harsh way or would have used some harsh words to deliver his idea then the tone of the author or to mood of the author is acerbic okay so in order to find out the tone of the uh, passage or mood of the author you need to see for words how the word chart framed whether it is harsh or whether it is normal or uh, whether it is uh, positive negative like that you need to see for words okay so this is one of the tones next uh, which we can get in options is sarcastic sarcastic or satirical both are uh, same we see a lot of political uh, satires like we see a lot of memes uh, regarding politics those are political satir uh, satirical so they sarcastically explain things right so it's self understanding sarcastic or satirical so this is another tone or uh, mood of the author next one is laudatory so laudatory uh, is again the tone or mood of the author where the author would have praised something praised something in the passage so if that is the passage then you can go for this kind of tone and then most commonly used tone is nostalgic when the author speaks about the past memories something happened in the past so that in that case the tone is nostalgic next one is dogmatic so here uh, dogmatic means making or proving something a fact to be true proving something to be true but there is no relevant uh, facts it is uh, uh, the explanation is unclear it's not proven accordingly so the author is actually proving something to be true but there is no proper fact supporting the concept that is dogmatic that's one of the two okay next one is informative so if the piece of uh, passage or the content told is very informative then you can go for this tone informative next is critical critical is a uh, judgment right so there are a lot of critics giving reviews for movies uh, books and all so like that the author would have criticized something giving positive as well as negative points about something and he would have insisted more on negative points like how to change this like that so that is critical next one is analytical analytical is making analysis like telling about the pros and cons and coming to final conclusion so that is uh, analytical okay next the final one is descriptive there are a lot of tones apart from this but these are the most uh, commonly asked tones in the passage descriptive as name itself says it is describing something so it is a normal passage uh, it doesn't speak about any of the other tones it's not acerbic it's not sarcastic it's not nostalgic or dogmatic or informative it's just a normal passage uh, which is which is having detailed explanation okay so that is descriptive next one is provocative so here it is provoking the readers it's provoking the readers to do something after reading the passage you get you are uh, getting stimulated either in positive way or in negative way that's provocative that these are all the uh, mostly asked tones in the passage now i hope you are all clear with this now we will move to the passage this is the first passage you can read this and the continuation is given in the next slide just read it uh, read this and we will discuss this after 2 minutes
So this is the continuation given in the second slide. Now we shall move to the questions part. What is the correct answer? Dr. Albert Schweitzer was the winner of the blank. What is the correct answer? Okay, I get a lot of answers for four and two. So in the passage, you would have seen two years. Okay, so one is 1953 and the other is 1952. You might have confused between these two years, whether it is 1952 or 1953. Okay, now we will go back to the passage and read it once again. So whenever you have reading comprehension, try to find out the keywords in the form of numbers or name. It can be anything. We have already discussed in strategies, right? So you can uh, underline those things. And uh, if you uh, have the tendency to forget something while reading out, if you have the tendency to forget something, what you can do is you can try to read one, one paragraph and try to write it, write it in two lines. So while reading, you have to write as well. So you have to do two jobs here. You have to read as well as to write. For example, the first paragraph has six lines. You have to short it to two lines. If the paragraph has five lines, you can make it to two lines so that you can understand. You can include some hints or points, which, which is very important. Okay, now we will read out this. Reporters and city officials gathered at Chicago Railroad Station. So the, the uh, railroad station has been underlined so that I will, uh, if I notice a question like that, I can see from the passage and answer. One afternoon in 1953. So the year which they were talking about is 1953. The person they were meeting was the 1952 Nobel Peace Prize winner. We don't know who is that person exactly. We have to read entirely to know that person. And he is the winner of Nobel Prize for Peace in the year 1952. But they are actually gathered in the year 1953. Okay, so based on this, what is the correct answer? It is option two. He is the Nobel uh, Nobel Prize winner for peace in the year 1952. You can see that in the passage, right? I have underlined and shown it to you. 
moving on to second question. Basically, you will have five questions out of this uh, for a one reading comprehension passage. Out of five questions, three questions uh, you can you have to answer from the passage, and two questions will be of like find out the vocabulary of the given, find the synonym of the given word or antonym of the given word, like that. We have already discussed about types of questions which you can get in an RC. That is factual, inference, find out the main idea, title of the passage, tone of the author. Along with that, you can also get vocabulary, find out the synonym of the word or antonym of the given word. Now, question number two, Dr. Albert Schweitzer Blank. So this is an indirect question. It's not, you have to read and understand the pa passage. You have to make inference. Okay, so what do you understand from the passage? That's what you're going to uh, give for the, give as an answer for this question. Yes, all of you have given the correct answer. It is option two. So this doctor, he was not prejudiced against black because what's the reason? You can find it in the passage. Because he was helping that black lady, elderly black woman, was struggling with two large suitcases. From this line, you can tell that he is not prejudiced against blacks. Okay, so correct answer is option two. That's the correct answer. Now, question number three. Dr. Albert delighted blank. Dr. Albert delighted blank in being helped by others, in not being honored, in being honored in helping others. What is the correct answer? So this is a direct question, right? So you can uh, find it directly from the passage. What is the answer? Okay. Yes, option four is correct. Dr. Albert delighted in helping others that we can find from 
uh, how he excuse that team members i mean the reporters and he help that old lady to board the bus so from that we can find find the answer question number 4 dr albert was blank what do you observe from this what, uh, dr albert was blank person okay option 4 is the correct answer so he is was kind and helpful option 4 is correct and fifth question this is the last question for the passage dr albert preferred to let his action blank so this is an indirect question okay we can't directly get the answer you need to read the passage and info from the passage yes option 1 that is his action speak louder than his words that's the correct answer so these are all the inferences which we can make from the passage and the most important thing is you have to select the most appropriate answer out of the given options now moving on to second passage we have another passage here you can read it out uh, the passage is con continuation in the next slide as well you can even take a, a pick of it and you can try to read it out the balance wheel world and the rusty foot pedal clattered up and down the needle hopped over the smooth stitching pleats holes and moving smoothly around the neckline The reel of cotton thread jumped and shook on its needle stand. Stop! You are making me dizzy," said the reel. "Stop grumbling, you foolish thing," said the pedal. "If anyone should grumble, it's me," said the same reel inside the bobbin. When the needle moved, it took the thread from the bobbin and made stitches under the cloth. I do all the important work, and here I'm stuck up day and night in this stuffy box. You all have fine time sitting there staring at the world. He continued. You can uh, have a glance at this one more time if you want. Now the continuation. Now, children, said the kindly old balance wheel. You all know what important work the lady is doing today. She is stitching a school dress for her daughter, who will be admitted in school tomorrow. We must all work hard and stitch it beautifully. I have had enough food today. It's too hot here, and I am tired of the needle poking his nose in all the time. Said the small reel. Listen, my children, continued the old wheel. I have been with this machine for about hundred years. At first, we belonged to a dressmaker. He made us work hard. One day, this lady's grandfather came to the shop. He liked the machine and bought it. The old gentleman wanted his daughters to learn sewing, but they did not use as much. Still, we were fed regularly with oil and cleaned by the cleaned by the servants for years. 
We have stood in this corner and seen many things. We saw the old gentleman die. His children then started quarreling. Slowly they became poor. The servants were dismissed. Then one by one the children went away and the house was closed. After many years this lady came with her husband. She had a daughter after a few years. The lady started using us after pouring uh, oil into these old joints. She did not listen to her husband's suggestion to sell off to a scrap dealer. As the wheel finished, everyone was quiet for some time. Then the reel said, we are very sorry and we would rather break into pieces than let down the lady. They all continued to work till the scissors snipped the thread and the beautiful dress was ready. So here you can see a beautiful conversation um, between the parts that we have in sewing machine, right? You can go through this once. It has three slides. You can go through it because I need to display the question slides as well. Okay, so moving on to question number one. Why was the reel of thread feeling dizzy? Why was the reel of thread feeling dizzy? What's the answer? Okay, option four. What about others? Okay, so this is one direct question which you can get from the passage. I can see four and one, lots of four and one. Let's see. So it is in this first uh, paragraph. Stop, you're making me dizzy. Said that cotton reel. Dizzy means it is, uh, it's like feeling as if everything is rotating, everything is spinning. Okay. Now, what is the question? 
why was the reel of thread feeling dizzy because it was made to rotate at a very fast rate that's the answer because dizzy itself if one feels dizzy then uh, for oneself it's uh, rotating it's spinning being confused or uh, being unbalanced so that is dizzy the correct answer is Uh, this reel it was made to rotate at a very fast rate that's why it's feeling dizzy second question what was the lady doing on the swing machine this is also a direct question which you can get from the passage what is the correct answer yes option 4 is correct actually she was making a spool dress for her daughter okay so that's what the uh, passage also speaks you can directly get the answer from the passage option 4 is correct question number 3 who brought the swing machine to the house if you can uh, uh, go through the passage you would have seen that uh, the wheel the wheel narrating about the things happening uh, in the in their lives actually okay so what it all happened after uh, the gentleman's death the wheel was referring to old gentleman so who is that old gentleman that was the one who got this sewing machine into the house exactly so the grandfather of the child's mother option 3 is correct very good question number 4 which of the following did not happen after the old gentleman's death which of the following did not happen so you have to make notice this one okay exactly option 2 is correct the cleaning of the machine by the servants because once after the old man uh, has passed away everybody were fighting the children were fighting so they split it they went off and the servants they were also dismissing the servants so there were no servants to clean the machine so cleaning of the machine by the servants was the event that did not happen after the old man stepped last question who is the narrator of the story of the lady's ancestors 
so we were uh, spe uh, speaking about the story actually uh, the story speaks a lot about the lady's ancestors and who is actually narrating the story Okay, all of you have given two as the answer, but I suggest you to read it again. Two is not the answer. Okay, uh, there is a conversation taking place in the first passage. You can see first the reel of cotton is telling how the reel actually fe uh, feels. He's feeling dizzy. And then in the next passage, I mean the next paragraph. Now children, I mean the old wheel, the old balance wheel is uh, starting to speak. Okay, so this wheel is explaining about the lady's ancestors. Like you can see, listen my children, continue the old wheel. I have been with this machine for about 100 years. At first, we belonged to a dressmaker. He made us work hard. One day, this lady's grandfather came to the shop. He liked the machine and bought it. The old gentleman wanted his daughters to learn sing, but they did not use as much. Still, we were fed regularly with oil and cleaned by servants for years. So, this is the one. That is the old wheel, uh, which has been in the machine for about 100 years. The wheel has seen many things after the grandfather's death. The wheel is narrating everything to the other parts of the machine. It is about the ancestors, how they... Okay, uh, so the correct answer is none of these. Correct answer for the question is none of these because it was the old reel who's describing about the ladies' ancestors, how they were uh, fighting with each with each other and how they split it across. So correct answer is none of these because we don't have the old reel, I mean the old wheel in the answer. So we are going for option four, none of these. Now, this is third passage. If you have any doubts uh, in the previous passage, you can ask me. If you want to uh, explain something, then you can tell me. I'll go ahead and uh, go back and explain again. If not, you can continue reading this passage. You can even take, uh, take a snap of this and read it. India is rushing headlong toward economic success and modernization. Counting on high-tech industries such as information technology and biotechnology to propel the nation to prosperity. India's recent announcement that it would no longer produce unlicensed, inexpensive, generic pharmaceuticals bowed to the realities of the World Trade Organization, while at the same time challenging the domestic drug industry to compete with the multinational firms. Unfortunately, it's weak higher education sector 
constitutes the Eshel's heel of this strategy. Its systematic disinvestment in higher education in recent years has yielded neither world class research nor very uh, many highly trained scholars, scientists, or managers to sustain high tech development. India's main competitors, especially China, but also Singapore, Taiwan, and South Korea, are investing in large and differentiated higher education systems. They are providing access to large number of students at the bottom of the academic system, while at the same time building some research-based universities that are able to compete with the world's best institutions. The recent London Times Higher Education Supplement ranking of the world's top 200 universities included three in China, three in Hong Kong, three in South Korea, one in Taiwan, and one in India. An Indian Institute of Technology at number 41, specific campus was not specified. These countries are positioning themselves for leadership in the knowledge-based economies of the coming era. There was a time when countries could achieve economic success with cheap labor and low-tech manufacturing. Low wages still help, but contemporary large-scale development requires a sophisticated and at least partly knowledge-based economy. India has chosen that path, but will find a major stumbling block in its university system. India has significant advantages in the 21st century knowledge race. It has a large higher education sector, the third largest in the world in student numbers after China and the United States. It uses English as a primary language of higher education and research. It has a long academic tradition. Academic freedom is respected. There are a small number of high quality institutions, departments and centers that can form the basis of quality sector in higher education. The fact that the states rather than the central government exercise major responsibility for higher education creates a rather cumbersome structure. But the system allows for a variety of policies and approaches. Yet the weaknesses far outweigh the strengths. India educates approximately 10% of its young people in higher education compared with more than half in the major industrialized. So this is the passage. You see how lengthy it is. That's three paragraphs, roughly three paragraphs. You can take snap of these paragraphs. You can read at your own pace. This is second slide. And the final slide. Okay, now we will move back to the questions. If you want me to display the passage again, please let me know. This is the difficulty level is easy to medium. That's what we can give for the passage. Now read out the passage. I mean, uh, sorry, read out the question. Which of the following statement is or correct in the context of the given passage? India has the third largest higher education sector in the world in student numbers. India is moving rapidly toward economic success and modernization through high tech industries such as information technology and biotechnology to make the nation to prosperity. Third one, India's systematic disinvestment in higher education has yielded world, a world class research and many world class trained scholars, scientists to sustain high tech development. What is the answer?
this is the direct question you can directly answer it by reading of the passage okay, so it's not indirect question or it's not the case where you have to make inference it's an easy question if you read the passage only you can first paragraph only you will get the answer what's the answer Okay, that is option A. One in the sense it's option A, right? So your options are here. These are your options. So according to the passage, only one is correct. Okay, let's understand this from the passage itself. I'm going back to the passage. So India is rushing headlong towards economic success and modernization. You can just underline this. India's recent announcement that it no longer produce unlicensed expensive general pharmaceutical. Okay, so this is this is nowhere finding uh, useful for the passage so we can eliminate these lines because uh, it's not going to give us the correct answer so we just read out the next lines unfortunately it's weaker higher education sector constitutes the Ashel's heel of this strategy so Ashel's heel is an idiom which means it is the weakest point even though there are a lot of benefits this is going to be that is weak higher education sector is going to be the weakest point. Systematic disinvestment in higher education has yielded neither world class research nor uh, many highly trained scholars, scientists, or managers to sustain high tech development. So they have they have invested in higher education. Okay, so that investment it hasn't created world class research or uh, highly trained scholars, scientists, or uh, philosophers. That's what it, uh, we can understand from this uh, passage. That's the last three lines of the passage. Now, coming to the question, you can see the first point. India has the third largest higher education sector in the world in student numbers. That is true, that we can get it from the passage itself. See, uh, in this in this paragraph, it refers India. So it has a large higher education sector, the third largest in the world in student numbers. That's what we have. That's what the statement one also tells. The statement one is actually correct. Okay. Now moving on to statement two. India is moving rapidly towards economic success and modernization through high-tech industries such as information technology and biotechnology. So this is also correct because this is what they have told in the very first paragraph. India is rapidly moving towards uh, modernization. That's what they have told in the very first paragraph. So this is also correct. If you take third statement, India's systematic disinvestment in higher education in recent years has yielded world-class research. So what this statement says is, it has benefited this research and it has also given trained scholars and scientists but actually the passage says uh, says it is neither benefited i mean neither uh, benefited for research purpose or it has given uh, sorry nor it has given trained scholars so that's what the passage says okay so according to the passage the third statement is wrong whereas the first two statements are correct so let us see the option. It is option C. That is both one and two is correct. One and two is correct. 
because option i mean uh, passage in the passage you can find statement 1 and 2 directly whereas statement 3 it's not told in the passage so statement 3 is false i hope you are all understanding question number 2 Which of the following statements, in regard to the information given in the passage, is not true? Again, you have to find out which of the statement is not true. This is uh, an indirect question. You have to make inferences. The London Times Higher Education Supplement ranking of the world top 200 question has included, uh, sorry, 200 universities has included three universities of South Korea. so yeah this is a direct question only it's not an indirect question you can get it from the passage just check whether the fact given in the passage is going with the options or not Okay, so the correct answer is option B. That's the correct answer because China is the fourth largest higher education sector in the world. That is actually not true. Okay, whereas other options. London Times Higher Education Supplement ranking of the world's top 200 universities has included three universities of South Korea that you can find in the passage. See, uh, here we have the fact included three in China, three in Hong Kong, and three in South Korea. One in Taiwan. Okay, and one in India. So this is the fact which uh, the passage speaks. And according to the fact, we have the option. Three universities in South Korea. Okay, so that's actually correct. And India has recently announced not to produce unlicensed, inexpensive, generic pharmaceuticals that will be a challenge for. domestic drug industry that is again true because we have it in the very first passage very first paragraph itself see india's recent announcement so it speaks about domestic drug okay so this is also true and third uh, statement contemporary large scale development requires sophisticated and at least partly knowledge based economy that's also true again fourth statement china has the fourth largest higher education sector in the world that is false because in the passage it is told that india has the third largest higher education sector in the world after china and us that you can find in the passage see the third largest in the world in student numbers after china and the united states so china would be either second or first because we don't know the number for china the ranking for china so we can't tell that but it precedes china precedes india okay so that's what we can analyze the statement which is false here is option b Okay, now question number three. According to the view expressed by the writer in the passage, what is the step toward recognizing a differentiated academic system and fostering excellence? 
So this is again, this is an indirect question. It involves inference. What do you understand from the passage? From that, what will you uh, give? What is the step you determine? That would be the correct answer. The university grant commission's recent major support to five universities to build on their strength, new education policy of the government, scholarships granted by the central government for research, government policy to open new world class institutes. What is the correct answer? Okay, so I'll give you the answer. We have only a uh, few minutes left out. Yes, option A, very good. Option A is correct. That is uh, the University Grand Commission's recent major support to five universities to build on their strength. Why option A? Because from the passage, we need to understand. The passage mainly speaks about a uh, poor higher education system in India. Okay. And UGC uh, is the acronym for University Grant Commission. So this UGC of India, it is actually set up by Government of India. And it is under the uh, control of Ministry of Education. UGC has the right to allocate the fund to different universities. To uh, strengthen them, they allocate the fund. And they also take in charge of maintenance of uh, these uh, maintenance of the standards of these universities. Okay, so actually, this is the correct answer. That's the step that can be uh, helping or boosting this academic system. So, University Grant Commission's recent major support to five universities to build on their strengths. That's the correct answer. Okay, now I'm going to uh, share passage with all of you. Okay, so that's in the form of picture and share it in the chat. You have to go through that. That is in the form of three lines. Okay, so in that you have to identify the tone. This is an, we, we haven't seen tone, right? We haven't seen a sample question for tone. So you can go through this. I'll attach the image in the chat. This is the image. You can download it, go through it. All registered cyclists have passed an examination covering traffic rules and safety. Those interested in the new bike share program must register their bicycles and provide a major credit card to ensure payment. Call 555-1212 for more information. So what is this? Uh, passage tells about. I mean, what is the tone of the passage? You have five options, and we have discussed about the tone argumentative, sentimental, dogmatic, informative, critical. 
argumentative is whether the tone is uh, having judgments or arguments sentimental is again uh, it's another word for nostalgic okay so what is the correct answer whether it is argumentative or sentimental dogmatic informative or critical yes that is informative because because in the passage only we can find informations giving it's a kind of giving information to the cyclist so they are also adding the word information over there call 555212 for more information so there itself we have a clue so it's an informative kind of tone okay so this is how you can uh, try to do reading comprehension if you find a very difficult passage you can just uh, check whether you can directly get the answer from the passage you can just check for the questions by reading out whether you can uh, get directly from the uh, answer i mean from the passage whether you can whether there is a vocabulary if that is a question then you can do it so you don't have to spend some time for reading out the passage you can give importance to vocabulary kind of questions and then uh, uh getting the answer from the passage directly so that you can score mark in case if you don't have time so this is the tricks to solve reading comprehension okay i'll stop here do you have any doubts is there any doubts we have discussed what is reading comprehension why it is kept in placement papers and uh, the tricks some of the strategies and also we have discussed three questions in that is there any doubts is it clear is it clear please respond it is clear Okay. What about others? Is there any doubts? So this is all about the reading comprehension. First, try to analyze whether the passage is easy or medium or tough. By doing that, depending on that level of expertise, you can uh, try reading out the questions. Okay. Yeah. That's all about today's topic, and we will discuss in another class. Thank you all for joining. You can leave. Thank you.